As organists, we have the ability to improve the spirit and meaning of a meeting much more than we might realize. The better our technique, the more capable we will be of enhancing the messages of the music and lifting the hearts of those we've been asked to play for. While improving organ technique is a lofty goal, it doesn't need to be overwhelming. In this video, we'll give you a few suggestions that, without too much work, can make a considerable difference in the way a hymn is played. Even if you don't have the time or inclination to learn to use the pedals, your organ playing can be greatly improved by developing and working on your manual technique alone. Some of the most impactful, yet fairly simple changes you can make for your manual or keyboard technique can be made in the way you approach legato, repeated notes, and phrasing. Let's begin with legato. Legato is playing the notes so that their tones run into each other without overlapping or having detachments in between. When we play a hymn, if we play the notes too detached, then the musical texture becomes chordal or vertical, which gives emphasis to the individual words instead of the complete phrase or idea. If we play a hymn in a legato manner so that the notes flow into each other, this helps the singer to connect the words and enables them to better understand the message of the text. How we address repeated notes in organ playing depends on many different variables. Because of this complexity, when you are in the beginning stages of developing your organ technique, it is best to approach repeated notes with the idea that they are meant to be repeated. Playing repeated notes properly gives rhythmic stability to a hymn. When we strike a key on a piano, we have a decay in the tone as the vibrations from the string die away. But with an organ, we have only on and off. On when we begin or attack a note, and off when we let off or release the note. Organists need to be aware of a note's value and give each note its proper rhythmic space by paying close attention to the attack and release of each note. When we have two of the same notes or chords side by side, we need to hear them individually. In order to facilitate this, we rob a little bit of note value from the first note so there can be a space of no sound before the second note is played. A basic model to follow is to shave off either an eighth count or half the note value of the first note when playing repeated notes so that there is an audible space of silence while still allowing the second note to be played on the intended beat. This keeps the rhythm consistent. We can tie repeated notes through a measure to keep a hymn from sounding choppy, but it is a good idea to clearly play each note at the beginning or downbeat of the measure to maintain the established rhythm. Before we go on, let's talk about repeated notes in the bass line. We can tie repeated notes through a measure to keep a hymn from sounding choppy, but it's still a good idea to clearly play each note at the beginning or downbeat of each measure to maintain the established rhythm. The final technique we'll discuss in this video is phrasing. The organ needs to breathe just as a singer does. When a hymn is played with good phrasing, it helps the singer to clearly understand the message of the hymn. Since hymn texts and musical phrases often end at the same time, Organists can read through the text of the hymn and use the punctuation of the text to help them determine the best places to breathe or make a break in their playing. At these phrase endings, we release the last note of the phrase a little early, again about an eighth count, and let there be a space of silence before beginning the next phrase in its proper beat. The more confidently and intentionally you phrase a hymn, the more sense it will make and the easier it will be for your congregation to follow. As with any technique, practice makes perfect. We will introduce more ideas to help you with your organ technique in other videos.